give y'all a minute or two to chime in here. Um, I'm just, I just want to come on here live real quick um, and do a quick commentary. Uh, I ain't going to be on here too long. Um, I just want to really share something serious with y'all. Um, this is not a joke, all right? This is not a joke, Israel. Um, yeah, a couple of y'all coming in here, so I'm going to just get right into it. I don't I don't want to be on here too long. Um, so, of course, Israel, can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me good? Is my audio good? Give me a con, triple seven. Um, Shalom Amina. Shalom Shem. Um, Shalom Karatazai. Karadaza Salakia. Karadaza Gabar Salakia. Um, can y'all hear me good? Is my audio good? All right, um, I'm gonna just get right into it. So, um, of course, Israel, we know yeah, y'all love the sensationalism. Shalom Yeshaya. Y'all love the sensationalism. Y'all love the hype, you know, and um, it is. It's, it's, it's a beautiful time to be in this truth and witness what's going on because um, we've been so oppressed, bullied, picked on, um, beat down, killed, hung, you know, lynched, enslaved. Shalom, Brother Marcus. Um, much love to all of y'all fans. Shalom, Mike Ala. H-O-I-D-M-V in the building. Um, so we've been through so much as a people. And the main thing is so much has happened to us without no retaliation. You know, niggas just sat by for so long and just did nothing while they got beat, killed, hung, strangled, choked out to death. You know, the brother Jordan nearly, he got choked to death in... Um, New York on the subway and nobody did nothing. I think it was a Simeonite and a Benjamite or whoever. It was a couple of so-called black men. I don't know if they were Judites or whatever. I think one of them was Simeon, another was Benjamin. But there were so-called Israelite men that stood around and let the brother just get the life choked that tail out of them. So it's a great time. A lot of us are rejoicing and happy, right? Right? Um... Yeah, we're going to address that in a minute, Brother Marcus. Um, and not all of our ancestors was cool. Some of our ancestors fought. We're going to get into that in a little bit of a minute. And if um, this is a quick commentary. If I don't address everything on here, we'll be, y'all know. We know y'all love the sensationalism, so we'll be talking about it in camps, in upcoming videos. Y'all know this going to be talked about. Scripture's going to be brought out, articles, whatever. For months on end, you know, this is going to be a, a a hot topic for a minute, right? So we know y'all want the sensationalism. Now I'm just messing with y'all, Israel, no folly. But uh, I want to say this, man, you know, um, we've been, so much has happened to us so many times without retaliation. Oh, like I was saying, a brother Jordan Neely, rest in peace, out up in New York, um, we did a pull up at the train station where the brother was choked, choked out, choked to death. And you had other Israelite men that stood around and didn't do anything, didn't help the brother, just watched the brother get the life choked out of him, you know. So it is refreshing and good to see our people come together and stand up in righteousness to finally defend themselves. All right, now, I'm hoping this will last, okay. Now, a lot of y'all might say, well, no, elder, don't say that. Dude, we about to turn up that up. But listen, I'm going to tell y'all something. The so-called white man has a way of dumbing our people down very quick. This this can be, this can happen and, and it can die out real quick. And then niggas is back to killing each other. Shalom, Brother Tony. Niggas is back to killing each other. And niggas is back to, you know, uh, letting the white man beat the hell out of him, kill him, shoot him, racist cops, kill him without doing nothing. So... Let's see how this pan out. Y'all don't get too happy too fast. All right? Now, <laughs> I know in 1 Thessalonians 5, it says, quench not the spirit. 
Um, it's a damn elder. You quenching the spirit, man. Don't say that. No, because I'm saying. I always bring this out. The FBI did case studies on our people where our anger and attention span don't last too long. I'm going to give you all an example. How many of y'all remember Sean Bell up in New York? 50 shots. All right. Um, put a con triple seven if y'all remember the Sean Bell case. Sean Bell got killed in November. I want to say November of 2006, I believe it was, or 2005. Put the year in if y'all remember. It was, hell, if you can look up the exact date. Sean Bell got killed near Thanksgiving. For a minute, it looked like New York City was going to turn up. You know, it looked like New York City was going to turn up, whatever. By the second week of December, Negroes was running around South Jamaica, Queens, scared to death of the police. The reason being, when they killed Sean Bell, all right, and this is all, not to get into a tangent, but this is all part of what I'm saying. When they killed Sean Bell, they were running around the uh, South Jamaica police precincts. They were running around South Jamaica, Queens, looking for this mystery fourth man, right? Looking for this wish. Uh, wow, bring it on, bring it on out, Saquon. Right? Why are you saying wow, Brother Ernest? <laughs> right? But anyway, um, y'all probably saying, wow, the elders finally speaking on this incident. Are we know. We know y'all love the sensationalism and the hype. Well, well I want to hear your thoughts on. I want to hear your thoughts on on um, the incident, the riverboat fight in Alabama, Elder. Well, what's your thoughts on that? My thoughts says it's a biblical prophecy. <laughs> what the hell you mean? What's our thoughts? <laughs> I'm just messing with y'all, Israel. No folly. Yeah, D. I'm gonna go. When Sean Bell got killed in late November, I want to say by the second week of December, Negroes was already. Back to uh, Christmas shopping, scared the death of the NYPD, and there was no uprising. Sean Bell's wife, I believe her name is Nicole Bell, she came on the Larry King show on CNN and said, we don't want no more violence, no more hatred. We just want justice. All cops are not bad. I just, she just dumbed down the whole goddamn revolutionary energy and spirit. So I say that to say, Israel, yes, be turned up, be happy, make your jokes, your, your cheer, the, the cheer warrior, <laughs> Israel, y'all funny as hell, cheer jitsu, or whatever. But let's hope this revolutionary energy and uprising energy continues. Y'all with me? Let me get a con triple seven. Let's hope that this is the start of a revolution or an uprising of our people, so to speak, right? Y'all putting swimming emojis. Y'all crazy, right? Let's hope this energy continues. Because now from what I'm, I'm hearing everything from Bloods and Crips tying their rags. If y'all know about gang culture, um... Tying their rags mean that they have intrusives, right? I'm seeing videos where brothers saying he go to the liquor store. He's seeing Bloods and Crips together uh, dancing and drinking liquor and, and, and chilling with each other. So let's hope this is the start of that kind of energy, right? I remember, I remember the elders in One West told us, I always remember this. They said, listen, the race war might not necessarily start over something major. Oh, some racist cops killed six black people or something like that. I remember the elders saying, listen, the most I don't always deal with, the most I deal, the most I deals with the element of surprise. The Lord, the Lord, yeah, Psalms 83 and 5. Yeah, y'all can post scripture. I'm going to do a little commentary. Like I said, this ain't the, one of the full videos we'll do on a riverboat accident. This is just a quick commentary, right? Try not to be on here too long. But, um... The elders in one west, the seven elders and some of the generals and, and uh, captains, they would always say, they would always prophesy and, you know, bring out the scriptures. Hey, the race war might not, it might not be something major. Oh, they found uh, 20 black men hung somewhere and, oh, this was a clan or no. 
They always said, listen, the race war might start off something small. That incident at the riverboat in Montgomery, Alabama, all the brother was trying to do was tell them to move their boat because the other boat has to come in and dock. And these white supremacists got proud, not, not, not wanting to take an order from a nigga. You know what I'm saying? And they got dealt with. It tells you about a damn fool in Proverbs. They got their asses handed to them. They got uh, uh, so-called African-American Negro Judite hands and feet put on them and chairs put on them all because over something simple. So my point being, this could be the start of that race war revolutionary energy from something as little as that. Esau, just learn to take orders. The man just doing his job. You can go home and eat some goddamn barbecue and drink some damn corn liquor and call them all kinds of that nigger had to tell us to move our boat. But just follow orders. You got your ass handed to you over something little. So the elders in One West would always say that. They would say, hey, the race war can start over something simple. It don't have to be a hundred niggas got lynched by Klansmen. It can start over something simple. So I say that to say, hopefully this might be the start of a new wave of revolutionary energy, uprising energy by our people. All right. Um, so now, once again, let me get into my main point. This is serious, Israel. Like I said, I know y'all love the sensationalism. Y'all love the sensationalism. Y'all love the hype. Y'all love, y'all having fun with the jokes, the cheer warrior and all that. It is, it's funny. You know, other, other, uh, Chief Ephraim posted a video with Simeon rising up in New York, hitting a, a cop with a chair. Now, I don't know if it was an Edomite cop, the, the, the um, um, I don't know if it was an Edomite cop or whatever, but Simeon rose up. Then there's another video. I think uh, Chief Ephraim shared that video in our HOI chat also, where a brother's beating on an Edomite with a yellow chair. So this might be start of the damn chair revolution. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, I was talking about the chair this morning, and <laughs> my daughter, <laughs> I might post a pic of that later. My daughter put, picked up her chair. I just bought her a chair the other day because we went to the beach. We had a cookout, and we went to the beach. So I bought her a little chair, my little three-year-old. And she said, Daddy, I got my chair. It was too funny. I wish I could have got it on video. But I was talking to her mother, my children's mom, about the chair. We were talking about this whole riverbank incident and with the chair and she lifted up her chair and said, daddy, I got my chair. <laughs> it was too funny. I wish I could get it on video. The chair, the chair revolution. But anyway, no folly, no folly. This is serious, Israel. Now I'm going to tell you, I don't know about y'all and I'm not, I'm not sensationalizing it. I'm not hyping it up or nothing like that. But, um, this is, from what I'm seeing, this is causing, like, some tension with Edomites. I don't know if y'all seeing it. And I'm not I'm not looking for something that's not there. I'm not over, oh, uh, see, I was in a supermarket. I was in a Vons. I was in a Vons supermarket in Long Beach the other day. I was taking my children to the beach, and um, I was stopping at the supermarket to get a few things, you know, we was going to need, some snacks or whatever for, um, He's going to be on the beach for a couple of hours, right? This is a, like, uh, Tuesday. Yeah, this is Tuesday, right? Two days ago. Two, three days after the incident in uh, uh, the riverfront um, in Alabama took place. So, you know, I'm, this, and this is my first time really out and about. Sunday, we was at the cookout all day. Monday, I kind of stayed in the house and relaxed, and it was a busy weekend, so I rested up, and just did some uh, some stuff in the house, and I think I went out one or two times Monday, and that was it, right? But this is my first time really out amongst the public like that. So I walk in the Vaughn supermarket, and first thing I see are these two big brawlic Edomites. One was short, a little bit taller than me. Y'all know I'm short as ever. And um, the other one was tall, but they both were big and brawlic. Looked like they work out. If you know anything about Long Beach, California, especially that downtown and near the beach, you see a lot of people, they, they're heavily into fitness. But me and this Edomite caught eye contact, and I tell you, it could have been on right then and there. Because 
he kind of had a look on his face like you niggas think that y'all got. If any of y'all been witnessing this kind of energy in y'all cities, put a con triple seven. And I'm not reaching here, y'all. I'm not. I have no reason to make this up. This eater might me and him locked eyes, and it could have been on right then and there. Right? That eater might looked at me like, "Don't you niggas go getting uppity." thinking you gonna do that to every white man i saw all that in his eye well elder you saw all that i'm not making this up y'all i don't i don't like uh what's y'all know one of my favorite says you can't make this up then his buddy kind of looked at me and we kind of for a hot five seconds or so we kind of we kind of was like what you know what i'm saying because and then esau esau know a coon when they seen him and they know they know that you got a certain spirit about you because you look them in the eye like, look, devil, I'm not kissing up to you or nothing like that. They they can put, they, they the children of Satan. Yeah, see, Yeshia said the workplace tension. Yeah, and Yeshia, you already told me about your job. They already racist there. Yeah, Sin City Devil. Yeah. You know what I'm getting? I don't know if y'all getting the same. I'm either getting Edomites being real nice or some of them cutting their eye at you like, don't you niggas go getting uppity. Right? So I say that to say this is serious, y'all. All right, don't get out here and all oh, yeah the chill and you, you throw that and stay on point. Now is the time to lock in and get on point. Right? Exodus 23, 13, and all things be circumspect, meaning be aware. Right? So yeah, see, Karate, as I said, I was told by there's tension in the air, y'all. So don't, yeah, uh, Ern, Brother Ernest Cox, Syrac 12 and 10, never trust thine enemy. And y'all got to remember, Esau is very subtle. All the Edomites that are acting cool and playing innocent, that's the ones you got to really watch. Now, again, don't get too happy, Israel, because there's going to be some lick back for this. There's going to be some lick back for this. Even the Edomites that's coming up here, you got all these videos, these TikToks and everything talking about um, yeah, well, what do you expect? You A lot of them Edomites don't trust. They acting like they on our side. But in the back of their mind, they like, I'm going to play devil's advocate. But you niggas, we going to get you niggas. And I'm going to hit you something. It don't have to be Alabama. It could be Washington, D.C. You could They could find two black men hung in Washington, D.C. See, you saw one thing about them. They roll as a nation. So... They can take a, the white supremacists could take an L in Alabama, but then they get a nigga in New York for it. They retaliate on some niggas in New York. They could take an L in Detroit, but they'll retaliate on some niggas in Atlanta. Long as they get they lick back. And oh, you better believe they're going to do something in Alabama too. Esau don't forget nothing. All right, Esau don't forget anything. And the Most High don't forget anything. Didn't the Most High tell us in Deuteronomy 32? I believe it's uh, seven or eight. Remember ye the days of old. So you so-called white people is in our spirit, is in our people's spirit. We're remembering the days of old. All the lynching, hanging. Uh, I was expecting that. I don't trust none of them at all. Just so as Iron Rust, so they... Right, that's right. Never trust thy enemy, because like as Iron Rust, if, so, is their, so is their wickedness. So... Don't sleep, y'all. And I know y'all in the truth. Um, I know y'all in the truth. I know y'all understand. And, um, you know, y'all basically on point, you know, but a lot of our people celebrating and they happy and they know this is really a time to get serious, y'all. To say, yo, this is going to spark it. I feel the tension in the air. Now, back to um, when I was in the supermarket, right? So... You know, the Edomites, they were, they were at the checkout line when I walked in. So I, I just grabbed one or two things, and I got to the checkout line as they was walking out. So the short Edomite, he was a little bit more built than the taller one. He looked at me again as he was walking out, and I looked at him like it ain't sweet. You know what I'm saying, devil? It ain't sweet. All that muscle and everything don't scare me. Is is either going to be me or you. So, and don't sleep on every Edomite, y'all, all right? If there was a, if those either mice were trained and had a certain spirit, them Jakes would have had to run for their money. Imagine if those was MMA Edomites. 
imagine if they were um, um, martial arts Edomites. Those were some damn hillbillies that probably never trained a day in their damn life. Probably eat pork and swine and unclean foods. You know what I'm saying? But this is a time to get they very silent down here in Bama. Kind of got their heads down. Jake ain't really bringing it up. Jake ain't really bringing it up. Uh, that's the vibe I'm getting, Elder. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jake, you know, you got a lot of coons and a lot of them. Oh, that wasn't right. Didn't Marlon Wayans say something? All right. Um, who knows? What did Marlon Wayans say? That damn coon. He just so happy that he can uh, dress up in drag and do movies like White Girl. Yeah, that nigga always saying something coonish, man. All right. So, um... When you, so when you check it out, right, we got in those who in this truth, but those who not in this truth better watch out and wake up. Yeah. And I'm hearing, I don't know, I haven't witnessed it myself, but I'm hearing there's camps that said that that wasn't right. No, 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 no. Listen. Listen. The spirit is coming into our people that we are fed up. We're fed up with the bullying tactics and oppression. Of Esau, Isaiah 3.15 says, What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces? And this system has spiritually beat us to pieces and physically. So all that was was the spirit coming on those jakes to get fed up and tired. Now, I don't know if they were all Judites. They might have been, some of them might have been from different tribes. I don't know. But that was all Israel being fed up. So I'm hearing, I'm not sure, I'm hearing camps that's condemning it. Oh, they shouldn't have did that. They should have called law enforcement. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm hearing that. I haven't seen that for myself. Those are alleged reports. But um, this is serious. So I'm back to the story. I'm in Vaughn's, and the Edomite, as he's walking out, like I said, he, he checks out his stuff, and he looks back at me. And I said, damn, you know. I said, okay, that's the first time I've really been out and about since the riverboat fight. There's some tension in the air. Right? So Zachariah... Nine, starting at about 12 and 13, it tells you, I'm going to raise up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece. We're living in that time. That tension time is here. So I remember uh, one of the generals, one of the five shield generals in one West, um, I believe it was Brother Mashaba. Shout out to Brother Mashaba. Uh, he's the elder and leader of um, ISHBK now. Um, the camp out of Houston, Texas. Um, I remember the brothers saying so. I remember a lot of what my elders and senior men and generals and captains in one West said when I was coming up as a younger man. I remember the brothers saying, listen, when these race wars break out, it's going to be on. He said, you're going to be walking down the street. Jake going to be walking down the street, and you, you and the Edomite are going to look at each other, and it's going to be on from there. And I always remember that, uh, uh the brother said that, the general said that back in one West, like in 94, when they was training us. Because we had the trooper program back in one West where we had martial arts training, military training. You know, they were, they were getting us physically in shape to be able to defend ourselves when we go to camp and stuff, which that need to be brought back in Israel. All right, all of y'all, all of you brothers, man, especially you brothers and you sisters, you should be engaged in some kind of training, martial arts, boxing, self-defense, whatever. All right. Some of you camps still have that incorporated into your curriculum, which is good. Right. We got that from one West. All of y'all are going to run your fat damn mouth about one West. But one West had a lot of good programs going on, a lot of good teaching. They were not right about everything. Some things they went off on. But stop running your big damn mouth about one West and you wasn't there. All right. But anyway, back to our regular schedule programming. So I suggest everyone engage in some kind of training to stay fit and in shape. You know, we know this ain't a carnal war, elder, but hey. I've had an Edomite say what the blacks did was right, finally standing together for being attacked. I was saying to myself, he's leeching. Yeah, a lot of them going to leech. A lot of them going to be opportunists, and a lot of them going to play possum. Anybody know the, uh, the saying playing possum? A lot of these Edomites going act humble and lowly like yeah the black stood up but in the back of their mind we're gonna get these niggas we're gonna get our lick back so be on the lookout for that but be on be on be on the lookout for subtle vengeance 
right? Let's be on the lookout for subtle vengeance from these Edomites. And like I said, it happened in Alabama, but the revenge could come in damn Sacramento, California. All right, remember, I, hell, and I, I believe that literally happened. Remember, something happened where a racial incident and some Edomites got convicted or they got something, and then a white supremacist killed the sister in an Oakland train station. And, and I think that it turned out the Edomite was a pro, he was one of the Proud Boys or something like that. He killed the sister all the way, and a lot of conspiracy theorists and black conscious brothers was bringing out that was a lick back for that other racial incident where them Edomites got judged. I'm not sure the full story, but I remember that. So these devils, man, they can get their lick back anywhere. You can have some brothers in the UK die behind this. Damn Scotland Yard can, can kill some brothers or whatever. Am I a British intelligence? Am I five? Am I six? Whatever. From 10 Downing Street. Go out there and kill a couple of brothers. They secret intelligence might kill a couple of brothers in, in England somewhere. Shalom, Mataf. So, my point being, this is serious. The tension is in the air. As a lot of these Edomites are acting nice. And a lot of these Edomites, they don't want the smoke. They don't want the smoke. You know, they like, damn, these niggas, these niggas are turn up. They'll get together and turn up. But then you got them Edomites. Oh, yeah, nigga. We're going to get y'all back. Don't worry. We're going to get y'all back. And... The crazy thing about it is, the crazy thing about it is, they all upset about a cheer, about the cheer wire, right? The brother used the cheer and he hit, he was hitting everything, but he hit the Edomite woman in the head. So they're saying that wasn't right. He didn't have to hit the woman. But that Edomite woman was one of them that was helping to jump the brother that worked for the um, doc or whatever. Then she was jumping in when they was uh, uh, washing other black people or jumping out. She was sneaking in there getting her kicks and licks. So that cheer slowed her ass down. All right, but if you're in the club, you hit a woman with a cheer. That don't mean a damn thing. Right? Didn't that woman get Emmett Till lynched? You white women ain't got a damn thing to say. A lot of you seduced black men and told them, you better sleep with me. And then when, they, when you got found out, you cried rape and got tons of brothers lynched and killed. What's that woman name with uh, Emmett Till again? Carolyn, Carol something. What's her name? She just dropped dead recently. And and uh, Joe Biden put up that fake ass statue of memorial of Emmett Till. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, by Tiana Taylor. Yeah. Con. What's her name? The woman that um said Emmett, Carolyn Barnham, right? Whatever the hell her name is. Carolyn Bryant, but I think she had got married. She had got married and her original last name changed or whatever. But anyway, that Carolyn bitch. Right, we're going to say it like that. That Carolyn Karen bitch. But anyway, these so-called white women are not. Look at all these Karen videos. They're not innocent. A lot of these Karens, they needed a damn chair upside their head. The worst Karen to me was this racist bitch, this white racist bitch that walked into her brother's house. That brother should have blew her damn face off. This bitch walked in his brother's house. So these Karens, they need more than a damn chair. They need a bullet upside their damn head. Like uh, on a lot of jobs, a lot of, a lot of white women... Even though they want the black man, they, they, um, the white woman's desire is to sleep with a black man before it's all over. That's, their, that's like on their bucket list, right? But a lot of them, what they did, and a lot of these stories went underreported. Over the years, a lot of white women seduced black men on a job. And then when Jake gave in, they filed sexual harassment and got brothers fired, got brothers jacked up, almost arrested, and lost good careers. Now, for every one of them, they seduced brothers on the job and slept with them because they wanted a taste of that chocolate, especially the dark brothers. They loved the dark brothers, all right? And they, they, a lot of them had affairs with black men on a job or outside of home on their white husbands because that was they was fulfilling their fantasy, all right? Um, and then a lot of... Uh, that's why um, it's so racist in this country. A lot of white men hate the fact 
that some of their white women even left them for black men. So that burns their skin. And a lot of their daughters, these young white girls, forget about it. They running after these rappers and these young brothers. I remember the brothers from GMS did that video when they did a survey. They asked all these white women and women of other nations, would you date a black man? And about 90% of them said, hell yeah. They said black men are the ish. They, they got the swag. They got everything. And they got you know what else. Matthew's the fifth chapter says we are the salt of the earth. So all these white women and women of other nations, they asked, they was like, hell yeah, we would date a black man. <clears throat> and I know they saw that and that burnt their damn skin. So this is serious, y'all. All right. Like my elder Yeshaya said in one West, one time, he, he, a, a OVHS tape I got of him teaching in Times Square. He told the Edomite, see, y'all laughing. This is not funny. This is serious. So, yes. We're going to have um, it's one thing to break up a fight, but it's another thing to have an all out brawl like we're fighting for 400 years of slavery. How do we navigate those situations when Christ told us blessed are the peacemakers? Yahweh Shai told us blessed are the peacemakers amongst our people. The scriptures tell you in Isaiah 48, 22, um, good comment, um, Sister Sapaya, but let me bring a little clarity. The scriptures tell you in Isaiah 48, 22, there is no peace, saith Yahweh, unto the wicked. First Thessalonians, uh, the fifth chapter says, when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction come upon them. So when Yahweh shall said, blessed are the peacemakers, that's more so amongst Israel. All right, it says, uh, how do we navigate those situations when Christ told us, blessed be the peacemakers? Listen, we're in a time where it tells you in Micah, um, Micah, I'm, I'm quoting y'all because this is a commentary. We'll, like I said, we'll address this in more sit downs and classes in camp and we'll get deeper into the scriptures and link up the scripts with what happened. But it tells you in Micah, I think of Micah 7 and 5 when it gets into the race wars, it said the remnant of Jacob is not going to tarry for any man. The Lord going to put the spirit on our people where we're going to be like the hell with making peace. Now, right, them brothers could have ran over there and maybe restrained the Edomites and said, we're going to hold y'all till y'all get arrested. But they was like, nah, y'all beat that brother down. We're going to get you. We're going to hand y'all asses to y'all. Y'all deserve an ass whooping back because y'all jumped the brother when nobody was around. So that's the spirit in the air right now, sis. The peacemaking is only for the children of Israel. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Right? Um, it tells you in Luke, I believe it is. Suppose ye that I come to send peace. I think it's Luke 12, 51. All these scriptures I'm quoting, y'all can go back to them or y'all can post them in the comment board. Like I said, this is a commentary. We'll get into verses when we address this, you know, in further videos. But um, Yahweh Shah says, suppose ye that I come to send peace. He said, Nay, but rather division. All right, Yahweh Shah is coming. He said, Listen, there's going to be uprisings in these last days. You know what I'm saying? So that's prophecy. The, the scripture I put in this commentary, Ezekiel 25, uh, uh, 12 through 14. The Most High said, I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. And the chair also. <laughs> the scripture saying Job 19 29 be, be ye afraid of the sword for wrath bringeth the punishments of the sword that you may know there's a judgment in this instance the sword was the chair and the chair was invented by a black man by the way also the folding chair now people said um, they're going to go out and just buy chairs just to buy them you, you're going to make Esau rich because all the chair companies are owned by Esau now you basically just going to make um, Esau rich. I would suggest don't go and go out and buy a chair just to buy it. We all probably got folding chairs in our house already, and you got them for functions, cookouts, different things, feast days, some of the camps, whatever. So don't just go out and buy a folding chair just to buy it. Uh, you're going you're gonna to make Esau rich because all them inventions, all the inventions of us, they've been taken over and patented by uh, Esau, and they get the lion's share of the profit. So 
Don't go out and just buy a chair just to buy it. If you need the chair and you want to hold it up and show it to antagonize Esau, then fine. Right, cheer Kwando. Yeah, the, the funniest one is the, the chubby Jake, the chubby brother that did the cheer jitsu. So um, I just wanted to share that experience with y'all I had on Tuesday um, in, in Long Beach. In Vaughn. Now, I'm all the way on the West Coast. I'm in Southern California, Long Beach, right off the water, off the damn Pacific Ocean. I'm way over here. That was way in Alabama. All right. Shalom, Shalom, babe. Wifey's in the building. Shalom, love you. I right, no folly, no boo loving. Get back to the video. <laughs> uh, bomb Alazar said I'm about a folding chair chain. Y'all crazy, man. I have a few wooden folding tables that were. Oh my goodness, wooden sis. You about to catch a. Uh, uh, you about to catch an Edomite body out here, sis. No folly. Wooden? You going wooden on them? So, is we having a little fun with it, y'all. You know, it's all good. We having a little fun with it, but this is serious, y'all. So once again, I'll just reiterate the story real quick. I was in a, I was in a supermarket, Vaughn Supermarket in um, Long Beach. Like I said, this is Southern California, off the Pacific Ocean. Montgomery is what, maybe at least fifteen hundred miles away. On a whole other side of the country, the South, but. You can feel the tension. Them Edomites, and they look like them gym rat Edomites out here in Long Beach on the beach. You know, them beach bums working out every day, bench pressing three, four hundred pounds. And they get, you can feel the tension. Them Edomites looked at me and, you know, I got the beard and, you know, I ain't smiling and cheesing with these. Eyes. I'm looking them dead in the eye with a serious face. You can feel the tension and you can almost feel, um, don't you niggas be thinking you going to be just doing that to every white person, you know? So I say that to say, y'all, this is serious. So have fun, laugh, make jokes, mockery, um, the cheer. There's about a million damn TikToks with cheer. Y'all crazy as hell. <laughs> Facebook posts, whatever. But um, somebody put up, I saw one this morning, somebody had a folding chair by their bed. And they said, I've been about I've been about that chair life. They had a folding chair by their bed and window. I guess to say, like, you know, um, I guess they were kind of saying, like, look, if somebody break into my home, you know, I've been about that chair life. You know what I'm saying? Y'all crazy. Y'all crazy, Israel. Y'all are crazy, you know. I guess that's what they were saying. Like, yo, I've I've been about that chair life. You know, I, I, um, I've been about that chair. Like somebody break in my house, they're going to get cracked over the head with a chair. So um, James chapter 2, verse 13 says, and this is going back to Sister Sapaya's comment. When she said, Yahweh said, blessed are the peacemakers. So some, some of y'all in the truth, y'all going to have alternative understandings of this situation. That's why we're going to dig into the scripts and get into this because you have to, you have to, you have to read all the precepts upon precept and then come to one fair balance. Now, to reiterate, Christ did say blessed are the peacemakers. So you're going to start selling chair necklaces. Y'all crazy. That chair, oh man, that thing is about to be a sensation. But don't go out and just make Esau rich just to do it. Use the folding chairs you already got. If you need folding chairs for an event, your house, whatever, by all means. But don't just go out and buy a folding chair just that you're just going to make Esau rich. Because they got all the folding chair companies now. If we, if you find a black-owned folding chair company, then yeah. Right? An Israelite-owned. But, um, hell, want somebody, hell, we need to make a chair company now. Right? But anyway, um... Yahweh Shah said, blessed are the peacemakers, but that's amongst Israel, right? When it comes to Esau, there is no peace. James 2.13 says, he's going to receive judgment without mercy that have showed no mercy. Esau didn't show any mercy. They didn't show any mercy on the brother trying to do his job. The brother had to throw the hat up in the air. He had to throw that smoke signal. I don't know if that's some kind of Alabama... 
sign that it's on. Yo, it's about to go down. Let me take my hat off and toss it in the air. Uh oh, it's about to go down, right? But right, uh, as I'm saying it, as I'm saying it, as I'm saying it, brother uh, Mataf Matataya posted as I'm saying it, right? But anyway, Matafi will post as as I'm saying it, right? The Lord said he's going to have mercy without judgment, right? He have judgment without mercy with those that have showed no mercy, meaning Esau didn't show any mercy. So, yes, even though Bobby Schmurder, B. Mac Waters in the building, shut up on Ken. Can't fight with a, a war with a chair. Yeah, time to get serious. Yeah, I do believe that. You can't fight a war with a chair, but damn it, he fought that war that day with that chair. Right. Um, so, in other words, when it comes to Esau, they don't get no peace. This is righteous vengeance and years of anger built up in our people. We're tired of being the victims of white supremacy. And the Lord said he was going to do that. He was going to put the spirit on uh, 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 East, um, Israel and they're going to do according to my anger and my fury. Ezekiel 25, 12 through 14. That's the scripture I posted in the... Um, in my uh, comment, in my title, right? Even though this is a commentary, scripture always have to be incorporated, at least quote it. Y'all can read them on your own later. And like I said, um, scripture will come out in other videos and commentaries. So y'all got any questions or comments? I'm gonna wind down. I just want to share that. This is serious. You can feel the tension in the air. Some Edomites are being nice and don't want the smoke in the funk. Some are playing possum. They playing innocent to get their vengeance later. And some are just straight up like looking at you like, nigga, don't go getting uppity. Like I said, I'm all the way in Long Beach, California, on the coast of the Pacific Ocean. And Edomites are here uh, and giving me dirty looks. All right. And yeah, Issachar said they fight dirty. So be on the lookout, y'all. Don't get too happy because it's, it's about to go down. Get serious. You know, laugh and make your jokes so you can um you can you can make Esau more mad because they get mad at the mockery. But also have that serious side. Proverbs 11 and 1, my favorite, one of my favorite quotes is about balance, Israel. Y'all know I always love to quote that. You know, I'll quote that to the chariots come. It's all about balance, Proverbs 11 and 1. So have, have the fun side of it, but get serious. Get on point. Get your physical training game up. Get your arms training game up. And above and beyond, get your spiritual training up. Because the, the, um, what's going to really defend you is your connection to the Most High, Yahweh Shah, and the angels. That having that edge around you. That's your true warriorship right there. On the physical side, my brother B. Mark Waters, Harlem World in the, Harlem World in the building. Like brother B. Max said, stay dangerous. And brother J. Talley said it, never trust thy enemy. Even these Edomites that's playing possum and playing innocent. And, yeah, they got what they deserve. We're going to get you, niggers. Don't sleep on them. Don't sleep on these white supremacists. All right, y'all? So that's about it. I just wanted to do a quick commentary because I know y'all want the sensationalism. When is the elder going to speak on the incident? And we're going to speak on it for months or however long. Y'all know we're going to be talking about it. All right? So... We'll rip, even though this is a commentary, but we'll rip this and put this on um, HRLA and uh, probably on our uh, HR Mustard Seed. All right, subscribe, like, share, um, comment, you know, keep your comments positive and in the spirit. Um, and that's that. Uh, anybody want to say anything? Any questions or comments before I close out? I've been on here a good 40 minutes. Uh, yeah, Manatazak. Out of one, yeah. Esau loves to hit soft targets. Watch the women and children. They, with the men, they make us into soft targets. Meaning, Esau, when he come after the men of our nation, because they come after us men too, but they do it when they got us outnumbered. Or remember, they use their law enforcement a lot of times to come after us. Because the scriptures tell you in the Apocrypha, um, I think it's Ecclesiastes 9.13, keep thee far from the man that have power to kill. So their law enforcement, that's why I want a lot of, uh, um, the F, even the FBI brought out a couple of years back that there's been a rise 
there's been a rise in racial, I mean, um, uh, white supremacists joining law enforcement, mainly the police departments, because that gives them a legal right to kill you. All they got to say, you was a threat, you had a gun, whatever the case may be, all right? Uh, Lamech, no, I don't think I'll be in Atlanta for Tabernacles. I'm probably going to be east or west. Uh, you know, it all depends on my dynamic. My dynamic has changed, so it all depends. I'm normally in Cali with my children, but I don't know how that's going to pan out this year. I'll be um, most likely east or west. As, as a, if I do come to Atlanta, it's only a small chance. But I'm going to rock with y'all. I'm going to rock with y'all one year most, I will. Unless the chariots come. But um, if we still here, I'm going to try to rock with y'all at least for a couple of days in the future. Um... It says, uh, don't sleep. Yeah, Karadaza, H-O-I-D-M-V said, don't sleep. Issachar said, Esau got war in his heart. How, would he sense, how do we sense that evil spirit? You got to pray, brother. Pray to the Most High to give you that discernment in these last days. And the scriptures tell you, Sirach 12 and 10 says, how to sense that spirit. Never trust thine enemy. For like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. As iron is sure to oxidize and rust, Esau, the devil, eventually going to come out of him. So that's how you sense that evil spirit, by always sensing that evil spirit. 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So the Lord said, always be on point. Always sense that evil spirit. Even when you think Esau is not a threat and they're innocent, still look at them as a threat, because that's the ones that will creep up on you. Right? Um... Yeah, like Elijah Muhammad said, if I if there's 50 snakes in a pit, 25 are poisonous and 25 are not, are you going to jump in that pit to try to figure out which ones, which snake you could pet and that's not? Hell no. You're going to stay out of the pit of all 50 of them. So even an innocent Akin Edomites, no, no, no. That's how you sense the evil spirit, by always sensing the evil spirit. Khan? Khan triple seven. Uh, last call says stay on code. Yes, yeah, stay on code at all times. That's how you detect the evil spirit by always being on point. And everything, everything is a threat. I'm not saying just walk around looking paranoid and crazy, but everything a threat. You brothers, watch yourself when you're out there, especially if you're by yourself, because the black man alone is a soft target. They'll gang up on you and law enforcement will come against you. You sisters, be careful when y'all out there. Y'all got your head wraps and dresses with fringes on. You know, um, you know, you're, a, you're they look at you as a threat. Like, she's a, she's rebelling against it. How, how come she not like Suki Hana or Megan Thee Stallion or Cardi B with her ass out everywhere? She's dressed in modest of power and respectable. She represents rebellion against the system. All right, be careful out there with your babies, man. You know, and there's going to come a time. It's going to get hectic out here. You ain't going to just be going outside to go outside. You know, you might not be able to go outside at all. It's going to get real, y'all. So protect yourselves, protect each other, do what you got to do, but mainly pray fast, read your scriptures, meditate, and do these commandments. Do the commandments so the Lord continue. All right. Uh, what is this? Psalms 34 and 7, the angel of the Lord in camp of round about them that fear him and delivereth them. So how do we fear the most high? By keeping his commandments. Revelation of 14 and 12. All right, uh, Ecclesiastes 12, um, 13 and 14. The conclusion of the matter is to fear the most high and keep his commandments. Once you fear him and keep his commandments, the angels encamp around you and deliver you. Con, con triple seven. So that's just a little edification, a little commentary on the um, the uh, Alabama Riverbank Boat Brawl. There's so many names you can call it, you know. The race riot in Alabama, because that, I meant y'all with something. That's why I said be serious, because that was like a miniature race war. That was like a miniature race war in um in Alabama. So now they saying that um the FBI... They said the FB, they, they claim the FBI doesn't have significant enough evidence 
to um, to charge it as a hate crime. Now, the reason why they said that because they said they don't have no audio of any racial slurs. They were they said they were cursing a Jake out and I guess giving him the finger, flipping him off. But they claimed that um that uh there was nothing. There's no testimony of anything racial being said. But we're not born yesterday, y'all. All right. Remember when Esau and Jacob came out the womb? Matter of fact, when they were in the womb, they were fighting in the womb. The children struggled together in her womb. If it be so, why am I thus? Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. We are not going to integrate with Esau at all. The tension has been there since the damn womb. It's been there since the womb. So you're not going to be able to get along with Esau. It's going to be on. It's about to be on. And if this don't start it, this, this might die down. Oh, no, nah, Elder, don't say that, Elder. It's on and cracking. Don't quench the spirit, Elder. I'm not the Most High in Yahweh Shah. What I say has no bearing on what the Most High going to do. This is just my opinion. And I'm just giving y'all another angle to look at it. This could die down. And the most guy, you could use something else to spark it up. It don't stop. It don't stop. So all I'm saying is be circumspect and be on point um, no matter what. Have fun with it. You know, not to repeat myself, but you have to with Israel so they can get the point. That's why the most High repeats the scriptures in various books. So be on point. And the main thing, stay girded up. Stay spiritually girded up so you can have that protection of the angels around you. Because it's going to get real in these streets, man. You know, it's going to get real out here. You know, um, y'all seen the movie, uh, They Clone Tyrone. All right. How many of y'all seen that movie, Con Triple Seven? Now, I haven't done, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I haven't done a commentary on that because I have yet to see the complete movie. I keep falling asleep or, you know, Satan don't want me to see something, certain parts in that movie. Um... Or either it's too loud in the house, my children, you know, I can't concentrate. A movie like that, I got to watch by myself. And I haven't been able to be in a house by myself for no length of time to watch the movie. But I've seen some of it. I put it on and then I woke up 3 o'clock in the morning and the damn, another movie's playing on Netflix. But I saw some of it. I want to say I saw about 60% of it. I need to see the other 40% to tie in the loose ends. But... In the movie, they clone Tyrone, as you can see, kind of towards the end of the movie, they have like kind of a little race war thing. Remember Jamie Foxx got everybody in the Glen together? And some people, some people that commentated on the movie said the Glen represents Atlanta. It had the Atlanta vibe. I don't know. But that could be any uh, southern urban city or ghetto hood, whatever you want to call it, right? But... Remember, Jamie Foxx got all the people in the Glen together. He had that golden revolver gun, and they rolled up on a secret laboratory. That was kind of like, remember, he was like, it's me, and I got half of the Glen with me. The Negroes rose up. So look at that energy just from the movie and how it kind of panned out in Alabama. Our people came together and rose up, even though it wasn't guns involved. It's kind of like art imitating life. It's like the spirit of that movie kind of came alive in Alabama. Because Jamie Foxx, uh, give me a con triple seven if y'all understand um, what I'm saying. So the Most High's word, Isaiah 55, 11 and 12, his word don't go out void. Right? His word, what the Lord said in that in the, in the, in the Bible is going to happen. Right? Yeah, Brother Jeremiah said it's going to die down. No, don't say that, Elder. We're on and cracking now. Listen, I personally believe that it's going to take much more. But this could be the start of an of a energy in the air. We don't know. But um, it's going to take much more because our people, they need a damn bat upside their head. But, you know, as you can see, you know, people are getting fed up. People are getting fed up. A lot of these Karens have been getting smacked around by sisters. Cause they think it's sweet so it's it's been a little tension in the air with our people but um oh i was gonna bring out uh yeah the fbi did a case study i think i said it earlier but i reiterated 
And they said, our people don't stay mad no longer than a week or two. And they go right back to... And remember, they showed you that. They kind of showed you that in the movie, they cloned Tyrone. But the brother Fontaine, they... um. Remember, they, they, when the Edomite was doing the mind control on the crowd, he had the crowd like zombies. And uh, don't worry, we'll, 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 I'll break the movie down once I get a chance to see the whole damn thing. I'll do it on a commentary or either in camp, whatever the case may be. But in the movie, they cloned Tyrone. When Fontaine, when they was doing the hypno, the Edomite was doing the hypnosis on the, the zombies in the club, the strip club. Yeah. Uh, they cloned Tyrone and Undercover Brother highlights their intentions. Yeah. And Undercover Brother Part 2. They got a Part 2 to Undercover Brother. But the, um, they made those in the comedies, but cause that's because they don't want you to take it serious. They don't want you to take it serious. Um, but yeah, those movies, um, and brothers say, that's another thing, man. Brothers, stop having something against conspiracies. Conspiracies are real. And a lot of you, you know what it is? A lot of y'all, and even in Israel, y'all don't want to deal with conspiracies because you feel like it's too far-fetched and it's just taken away from plain stuff. The government engages in conspiracies that have been exposed. So a conspiracy is nothing but the Lord allowing Esau to set up an agenda and he allows it to work because it goes along with prophecy. Don't have no, don't be afraid of a conspiracy. All right, or don't... um. Don't uh, don't think you know stuff can't be a conspiracy. There's tons of conspiracies that have been proven to be real. So a lot of you, oh, you y'all just gonna get into conspiracy? No, there are a lot of conspiracies by the government, CIA, Illuminati, and the intelligence agencies of the world. Yeah, but it's it's just something. Remember, the Lord said Esau is the sword, and I believe it's in Psalms. The Lord said Esau is his right hand. He uses them. A lot of times the Lord used Esau, the so-called white man, for his conspiracies to work because they're fulfilling prophecy. 9-11 was a conspiracy. And you must be under a damn rock if you don't believe it wasn't. That was a conspiracy, but it was to fulfill prophecy, to bring their towers down. Terrorists shall make them afraid on every side. All right? Even though their own government was a terrorist. So... I say that to say, man, don't, you know, don't, don't, don't have a problem with conspiracies. So in that scene and they cloned Tyrone after the Edomite had, was using a, um, the mind control on him, a Olympia black or whatever he said, Fontaine went right back to just being Fontaine. He was like, we can't fight these people. And a lot of our people have that defeatist mentality. They like, look, man, I might as well just be a nigga, smoke my weed, chill in the hood, kill my own people, you know, have op this is our culture. This is what we do. We can't stand against no government. We're just a bunch of niggas. We meant to just smoke weed, take drugs, kill each other, whatever. Psalm 17, 13, Con, I thought it was 13, but it's 17, 13. All right, so... A lot of times we have that defeatist mentality. If you can't beat them, join them, or just go back to being a nigga because you ain't going to never be able to fight against this system. And they showed that dynamic with the brother Fontaine until he snapped out of it. And Jamie Foxx was like, yo, we got to go deliver yo-yo, you know, from the secret lab, whatever. How many of y'all um, seen that scene? Give me a con triple seven. All right. I know um, a lot of brothers and conspiracy theorists and black conscious guys, and even, even a lot of people have done commentary on the clone Tyrone, but I'll, I'll say something about that once I can see the whole movie. And like I said, there's certain parts Satan don't want me to see. But anyway, uh, no father, I'm going to wrap this down. I've been on here an hour. I was supposed to only do like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, but y'all know how we get. So um, if y'all enjoyed this commentary, if y'all learned something, if y'all get edified, put a con triple seven. Yeah, so y'all remember that part in the movie, right? Yeah. All right. Fontaine kind of was like, yo, I'm just going to go back to being a nigga. I'm just going to go back to selling drugs, drinking my 40, you know, um, getting my scratch offs because this stuff is, you know, this stuff is nonsense. All right. Yeah. The FBI said our people don't stay mad no longer than a week, two weeks at the most. I use the example of Sean Bell. 
Sean Bell got killed at the end of November, around so-called Thanksgiving. By the second week of December, you damn near didn't hear Sean Bell name no more. Niggas was Christmas shopping and back to uh, fighting and killing each other for the holiday season. By New Year's, they was uh, 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 acting like they was shooting in the air, but shooting each other. So we don't stay mad long. So this whole Alabama thing, let's see how long this lasts. It might die down, the most I might rise up something else. All right, but, you know, we'll see. All right, so with that, I'm going to sign off. Remember, um, uh, Matthews 20, 20, um, Salakia, Matthews 20, 641, um, watch and pray because uh, these are serious times we're living in Israel. Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray that you not be uh, drawn into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Stay strong in the spirit. Don't give in to the flesh. Um, you Israelite groups that teach to love the other nations and they can be accepted and they're going to get salvation with us. Y'all ought to be ashamed of yourselves and repent. These are our natural born enemies from the time of Genesis. And I don't give a damn if you don't believe um, Esau is not the white man. The hell with you. All right, no disrespect, but, you know, that's what it is. These are our natural born enemies from when Jacob and Esau was fighting in the womb. So watch and pray because we in serious times. Have your fun, mock these devils, but be serious and be ready at all times. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Quam yashallah. All right, any last minute commentaries or anything? So if not, okay, with that, I'm going to sign off. Um, quick announcement. Don't forget, HOI, 19th Annual New York, New Jersey Headquarters Cookout is coming up August 20th, Sunday, August 20th, 12 p.m. till sundown, Prospect Park, Brooklyn. Enter Park at Prospect Park West and 9th Street. All right, um, you can bring something for the grill, drinks, food, whatever. Um, you can give donations at uh, paypal.com under inac747 at yahoo.com. I as in instinct, N as in Nancy, A as in apple, K as in karate, 747 at yahoo.com. Um, you can cash app or chime, I mean um, Apple Pay or chime at 347-243-4159. And uh, you can uh, donate via cash app just... Email me at houseofisraelnyc at gmail.com. Um, or you can um, inbox me here for the cash app. I don't just give out the cash app handle because I'm using another account now because cash app is being some idiots with my account. So I'm using a, another account that I took over. So, I, But I just don't give that out like that. You can uh, email me or inbox me for the cash app. If you can't make it to the cookout, your support and donations will be greatly appreciated. All right? We got to get food, charcoal, all that good stuff, you know. So, um, but that's August 20th, Sunday, August 20th, 2023, 12 p.m. to sundown, Prospect Park, Brooklyn, um, New York. Um, enter Park at Prospect Park West and 9th Street. Walk straight into the cookout area. Most high will, you'll see us right there. All right, that's what's coming up. The feast day season is coming up. Um, trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles. Um, and we'll announce any other uh, events coming up. Um, brothers are going to be in Nashville this weekend. And also, brothers are pulling up to Montgomery, Alabama, to the river, uh, boat to the pier where the incident happened. And they're going to do the pull-up boys will be there in Alabama this Saturday, this Shabbat, to do a camp and talk about the situation. So... We're going to talk about it. We know y'all want to hear the sensationalism. What are your thoughts on the situation, Elder? Damn it, it's a prerequisite to the race war. Matthews 24 and 7. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. By Shema Mashiach, I was shy. All right, so that's about it for announcements. I'm going to sign off with that. Kwame Ashala, we still got next. Hallelujah. All praise to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai forever and ever. Amen. Stay strong. Stay vigilant. Stay aware, Israel. And remember, if you can make it up to New York for the um, HOI 19th Annual Cookout, come on through. If you can't make it, donations will be greatly appreciated at the links I gave. I'll put it on the comment board also. Um, 
So that's about it, Israel. That's about it, Israel. All right, stay strong in the spirits. Stay vigilant. Stay aware because we're living in serious times. Have your cheer jokes, but be ready to use that goddamn cheer if you have to. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to sign off. H-O-I to the chariots fly. Free Sabak. All the camps in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai throughout the four corners of the earth. Kwam Yashala, we still got next. Hallelujah. Bring it out. H-O-I pull up, boys. All the camps in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai forever and ever. Amen. We still got next forever and ever by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Stay strong in the spirit. Alabama is just the beginning. Khan, all praises to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai forever, ever, and Amen. That's right. A chair is still a chair. Even though there's no one sitting there, but a chair is not a, no. <laughs> nobody, a chair is still a weapon, even though a white supremacist is not there. <laughs> Y'all, I'm out of here, Israel, no folly, all praises to Yahweh, Yahweh, shy forever of our mud. Shalom, go. Come, Yashala. Come.